today we're going to go over area of parallelograms and triangles, and then we will also use Heron's formula um, to figure out area of triangles where you're not given the height. So first of all, we need to go over a bunch of different formulas. So the area of a square is sides squared. So of course, all of these would be a number because all four sides of a square are the same. And so whatever that number is on any of the sides of the square, you square that number and that will give you the area of a square. Area of a rectangle, there's two ways you can see it. It's either base times height or it's length times width, but they're both the exact same thing. Um, this would have, oops, sorry. This would of course be the height and this would be the base. So whichever way you wanna do it. The area of a triangle can be written two different ways. So it's either base times height divided by two or half the base times the height. Um, and if you're one of my students, I typically do half the base times the height because that's just the way that I learned it. Um, so just FYI. So the height will always be, ooh, that's a terrible straight line. Um, the height will always be perpendicular to the side. So this will be the height and then the base would be at the bottom. On a right triangle, your height is one of the sides and your base is the other, well, I should say leg. Your height is one of the legs and your base is the other leg. So that's specifically for a right triangle. But the height is always um, that vertical where it touches at 90 degrees on a triangle, where it's perpendicular to the base. Area of a parallelogram is the same as a rectangle. Um, the only difference is we don't call it length and width. That's base, oops, I said width and then wrote H. Um, it's base times height. Now on this one, same thing, the height will be at the 90 degrees. So it's not the curved um, piece, it's that straight up and down where it hits at 90. And then of course the base is the other side. So um, just make sure that you always, on a parallelogram, the height has to be where it hits at that 90 degree angle. Height should always be perpendicular to the base. Lastly, we have Heron's formula. So S is, um, we're gonna talk about the variable S. S is um, the perimeter of the triangle divided by two. So we're gonna say that this triangle has sides A, B, and C. So to figure out the letter S, you add all those sides together because that's how we find the perimeter. And then you divide by two. So that's what S is. But Heron's formula is finding the area of this triangle. So that's this formula. You do S and then A minus, oh, I'm sorry, S minus A, other way around. S minus B and then S minus C, and it's the square root of all of that. Um, so to find S, you do the perimeter and divide it by two. That's what S is. And then this is the actual Heron's formula. All right, so let's practice some of that. So this one, we're gonna use Heron's formula to find. So to figure out S, you add up all the sides together. So six plus 10 plus 14 and divide that by two. Well, 6 plus 10 plus 14 is 30, and divide that by 2, and you get 15. So our S is 15, but remember, that's not our answer. That's just what S is. We have to plug it into this formula here. So you do the square root of 15, and then 15 minus 14, 15 minus 10, and 15 minus six. It doesn't matter the order that you put the sides because um, they are ultimately all being multiplied, so it doesn't really matter. So that means that you have 15 times one times five times nine. Oops, there we go. And then of course, 15 times five times nine is 675. 
which is the same thing as saying 225 times 3. And 225 is 15. So 15 square roots of 3 would be that answer. So that's the exact area. Anytime it asks for exact area, you're going to have to reduce to the square root. And remember, on Schoology, you would write 15, then SQRT, 3, like that. All right, this next one, let's practice some more Heron's formula. So S is 20 plus 16 plus 12 divided by 2. 20 plus 16 plus 12 is 48. And then 48 divided by 2 is 24. So that's what S is. That is not our area. To find our area, you have 24. Then 24 minus 20. 24 minus 16. And 24 minus 12. So that gives us 24. 4. 8. And 12. And then when you multiply 24 times 4 times 8 times 12, you get 9,216. Which, whenever you take the square root of that, it will give you 96. Um, also, typically, if they don't give you units, you just write U. So for units. And since it's area, it's squared. So same thing up here. This should really be units squared. And area is two-dimensional, so that's why it's squared. Perimeter is one-dimensional, so it's just the unit. Area is two-dimensional, so it's squared. Volume is three-dimensional, so it's cubed. That's how you know what to write. All right, then we have the area of an equilateral triangle, which means that you square your sides of the equilateral triangle times the square root of 3, and then divide it by 4. You can also do 1 fourth side squared square root of 3. Both of them works. So remember that these are my S's. So first of all, for this equilateral triangle, we have our side is 8. So 8 squared square root of 3 divided by 4. 8 squared is 64. And then 64 divided by 4 is 16. Don't forget your square root of 3. We don't know what the units are, and they're squared. This one, we have 6 squared, square root of 3, divided by 4. 6 squared is 36. And then 36 divided by 4 means that the area is 9 square roots of 3, and we don't know what the units are, squared. All right, so these are called composite volume. And so what you do is you split it up into separate images. You find the area of those separate images, and um, then you add all of them together, at least in this situation. Um, you would add them all together. Some situations you might subtract out, like if there's a hole in the middle. So for this first one, we have three different shapes. We have this triangle here. We have this rectangle here. And then we have this triangle here. So three different triangles. Um, and this piece would be 40 minus 16 because there's a 16 here. So 40 minus 16 makes that height 24 for that triangle. So we have our area of our triangle that's pink. Um, so we do half the base times the height. So for this pink triangle, we have base and height. And it doesn't really matter which one you choose for your base or your height. You're just going to do 16 times 30. So half of 16 times 30. 
which would end up giving you 240. So that's the area of the pink triangle. Then we have the area of, it's purple, but it's hard to tell. This was purple that I was using to highlight it. So area of the purple triangle, you have half. Um, and then you have this base, because that 30 is how long this is for the green, but that still is the same as this up here. So you have 30 and 24. So base and height are 30 and 24. And it doesn't matter which is which, because you're just going to end up multiplying them. So 30 and 24. Half of 30 times 24 is 480. And then we have to do the area of the rectangle, which is green. And that's base times height. So for this one, we have 30 and 16. So 30 times 16 ends up giving you 360. So the area of the whole shape would be 240 plus 480 plus 360, which ends up giving you 1,080. We don't know what the units are squared. This next one is done the same way. We have two triangles. You have this one on the left, and then you have this one on the right. And then, of course, you have this rectangle. Ooh, that should have been blue, and it's coming out green. You have this rectangle here. We're going to call that purple. So we have the area of our pink triangle. Um, so this part of it would be 18 minus 12. So whichever... Um, but that, well, that's how you figure it out. So 18 minus 12, so that would give you 6 here. So the area of this triangle is half 7.2 times 6, which when you multiply all that out, you get 21.6. Then you have the area of the green triangle. That should have been A. I was looking at triangle, sorry. Area of the green triangle. Um, so we need to figure out how long this is, but it's going to be the same as the left hand. Oh, wait, no, it's not. 7.2 minus 15. Wait. Yeah, so this should be the same as the other side, so this would be 7.2. Sorry about that. So we have half times 7.2, but this time our base is 12. So times 12 which when you multiply all that together, you get 43.2. Then lastly, we have the, not triangle, area of the rectangle, which I tried to highlight purple, but the color of it messed it up. So we have 18, um, but we need to know how long just this is. So it would be 15 minus 7.2, which would be 7.8. So base times height is 18 times 7.8, which ends up giving you 140.4. So the area of the whole thing is 21.6 plus 43.2 plus 140.4. And when you add all of that together, it gives you 205.2. And we don't know what the units are. Squared. All right, this last one. So remember that all of the tick marks tell you that those sides are the same distance. So this is 12, this is 12, this is 12, this is 12. Of course, this one I just did because this is a square is also 12, 12, and 12. So we have two equilateral triangles um, and then we have a rectangle. So both of our equilateral triangles are the exact same measurements. So you have two areas of a triangle, equilateral triangle. So we're going to end up multiplying this times 2 for our final answer. So equilateral triangles, our side is 12 squared times the square root of 3 divided by 4. 12 squared is 144 divided by 4, which gives you 36 square roots of three. And remember that we have two of those. 
And then we have the area of the square, which again is side squared. So it's just 12 squared, which means this area is 144. So the area of our whole thing, remember we have two equilateral triangles. So we have 36 square roots of three plus 36 square roots of three, and then plus the area of the square. Well, in this situation, you have to combine these two together, but leave this one separate because it doesn't have a square root of three with it. So 36 plus 36 is 72 square roots of three, and then you add 144, and that's the exact area, and that's units squared, and you would leave it exactly like that. That would be the exact area, no rounding. Um, if you needed to round it, of course, you would put just this in your calculator and then round it just like you normally would. That's the end of our notes.